At some point in your WordPress career, you've almost certainly wanted to bring in reviews, whether it be from Facebook or Google or show social feeds. And I'm sure you've probably found just like me that there are a bunch of plugins out there. Some of them stop working. Some of them don't work at all. Some of them are complete junk, but thankfully we have a new offering on the market from the devs behind Fluent Forms. They've brought us a plugin called WP Social Ninja, and what that allows you to do is bring in not only social feeds, but also reviews from a bunch of different websites across the internet. The most impressive thing to me so far is the fact that it's so easy to set up. I'm not joking, in five minutes, I had reviews in a feed on my website with no hurdles whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do is take you behind the scenes and look at the pro version of the plugin, because there is a free version that's very capable with, of course, limitations that a free version might have. And then uh, what I'll show you is the pro version. So I've gone ahead and set up a number of feeds along with a review list as well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. I'll give you a tour of the plugin settings and hopefully it will give you an idea of whether or not you actually need the pro version. If you don't already have this plugin, please do consider clicking the link in the description below. It does give me a tiny kickback and your price does not increase. I very much appreciate it and I will absolutely be using this on any client site where we need to show reviews. I typically always use the embedded Google map because it also pulls in their reviews from their Google My Business listing, but often clients want reviews from multiple places and it wasn't really possible to do that without copying and pasting things manually and now we can eliminate that entirely with this plugin so I'm super excited about that so let's go ahead and switch screens here and I'll give you guys a tour so here's a quick look at the website I'm not gonna go through this it's pointless for me you guys can do that but I wanted to make sure you know what plugin we are talking about so that is the website so here's the first example page I set up this is a YouTube feed of my premise lug so this is a bit meta right now but this is a single short code that is connected to my YouTube account and it's pulling in all of my most recent videos. This is exactly how the template looks out of the box. I've done no customization to this whatsoever. Next up on the list is a combined review feed that has both a Google profile and a Facebook profile for a friend of mine's business that we've built here on the channel. So you can see this is bringing in the recommends thing from Facebook and it's also bringing in the star count from Google. You can actually go ahead and click on these and if you look in the lower left, you can see the place ID for this business and that's how it's pulling in those reviews. You can configure, of course, how many reviews it brings in, and then you have a load more button. So you can see it also changes with the brand colors. You have the orange from GMB, and you have the blue from Facebook. So this is super, super neat. Of course, you can change how many columns and stuff there are, which I'll get to in a little bit, but I just wanted you to see on the front end what this looks like. Then of course we have an Instagram feed as well. So this is very similar to how it looks in the free version, but on the pro version, you also get the likes and the comments as well. So there's some minor things like that that you just have more flexibility to do. And also there are quite a few things in terms of integrations that aren't included in the free versus pro. I'm not really gonna touch on what's not included and what is because you can always just install the, the free version and see if you like it. And if you decide you need some of that other stuff from the pro version, you can just go buy that. So let's go ahead and take a look in the back end. So the first thing you're gonna do is configure all of your different platforms. So at the time of recording, the Facebook social feed says coming soon, but right now you can see you have Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. So of course, as you saw, I've already connected quite a few of these and none of them required any extra steps outside of some basic prompts. So when you click one of these to connect it for the first time, it's gonna have some super basic setup questions for you. Which you know properties and assets do you wanna show? In the case of YouTube and Google My Business, it gives you a little code. You copy and paste that code back here into WP Social Ninja and you are off to the races. So it's super simple. Now, some of these other ones I don't have any use case for. I'm not on Airbnb or Amazon or anything like that. So I don't know exactly how those are gonna work, but I have to presume they're gonna be very similar. But I think for most of us, this is probably a realistic use case. You're almost certainly gonna have Instagram and Facebook, and then you're probably gonna wanna show your reviews from Google and Facebook as well. Then of course you can see there's this all reviews tab. So you can see all of the different reviews that are automatically being pulled in and you can add your own custom one as well. So this probably is gonna be useful if you have a review from some other site that you're not connected to, somebody gives you a written testimonial or something like that, you can pop that in here and attach all of the same information that automatically gets pulled in from Google and Facebook. Then of course we have our templates. So what you saw on those pages was essentially these templates I just took the short code, you have a click to copy function, and then of course I just went and pasted this. This is actually an Oxygen Builder site, but I just added a short code element, tossed that in, and this is what it looks like on the front end. If we go ahead and edit this Instagram feed, 
Sorry for the chop here. I had to edit and fix a big mistake that I made. So nonetheless, here's the Instagram feed. And you can see this is exactly what it looks like in the back end as compared to the front end. So the first thing you might want to do is change the template name to something like Instagram feed. And fortunately, it doesn't change your short code name, so you won't have to go update that, which is great. But the first thing you'll do is configure your source. So in our case, we already have the Farron V Coffee Roastery added here. I'm assuming based on the way that this dialogue functions, you could add multiple Instagram feeds if you had that connected, but I don't really see why you would want to do that. But nonetheless, looks like you can do that. It says fetch feeds, so you must be able to do that. So then this is a relatively basic template. We are just using the first one here. There's two different ones. The second one essentially just puts your text down below it. The first one is just on hover, then you get the text. So the Instagram templates are very basic. Next up you have filters and most of these filters are going to be a pro feature. So these three fields down here you can show and hide based on different hashtags or hide posts based on an ID. And I know for a fact these are pro features. So if you need that, you would definitely need the pro functionality. The other thing is under this post section, you can see we have display caption. We can display likes and comments on hover and those are pro features as well. I think that just looks really nice, especially if your business or whoever you're working with gets lots of interaction on social, just makes it look super, super nice. Instagram is basic, of course, in terms of the control you have for these templates. But if we go back to our template here, you can see we also have number of columns. If you wanted it to be four column, two, or you know whatever is most applicable for your layout, you can make it fit. Next up, we have the header section. You can just disable the entire header if you'd like. What I would probably do is go ahead and remove the bio text and then also the full name here. So then you just have the username, the posts, followers, and then the follow us. The other really cool thing is you can actually change the follow us text. So we can change that here in just a second on this follow button. We could change it from follow us to, you know, follow us on Instagram or whatever you want. So that's a really nice feature of Instagram. Like you already saw as well, we have pagination so we can do a load more. You could go with something like six or maybe nine, something to equal your template layout, you know, how many posts you have per column. And then the other great thing is this preview you get in the back end is exactly like it is on the front end. So if we go save this template and then go look at our Instagram feed, then there it is. That's exactly what we just updated. Obviously we removed the bio. We changed what it says in the button here. We have our likes and our comments on hover. So all of these features are really nice. Looks like our load more button isn't popping in. I'm not sure why that is. It might be something to do with my template, uh, but that is not ideal. I don't know why that is. So you essentially have two different types of feeds in your templates. You either have a reviews feed or you have a social feed. So when you click the add new template, you have a review template or you have a social template. Now the YouTube one is pretty much identical to Instagram with minor deviations. So I'm not gonna go into that. The other thing I wanted to touch on is the reviews here. So you can see in terms of your controls on the right hand side, everything looks fairly similar. The thing is, this is why I believe you can have multiple Instagram feeds because the dialogue again looks identical. So we have basically Facebook and Google My Business for Farron V Coffee Roastery. And what's so cool about this is in the reviews, you can see which one came from where. So we have the Facebook logo, and of course it says recommends, it's not a star rating. But then with our Google ones, we have the GMB icon, and we have the star rating, which is just so cool. And then of course it has the brand colors to differentiate the two. So this actually has a ton of different templates, which is really cool. I just kind of chose one at random. We could kind of click one of these and just see what it looks like. Obviously some of these don't show the review text. Some of them do. They all have different layouts and you can configure almost all of these to show and hide the different elements. So I would probably use what would be like a practical, oh, there's another way to do it. So that shows Google and Facebook as tabs instead of icons. I think I would probably choose a layout like, that looks fairly reasonable. So we're gonna keep rolling. You also have a filters tab, just like Instagram, except there's a few different options that Instagram doesn't offer. So you can actually filter by star rating. So if you want to get a little tricky, you could say it has to be three stars or higher for it to show up here. However you want to do that is up to you. Number of reviews, you might want to crank down to something like 25, whatever is applicable for you. I don't think there's any reason to have 50 reviews on there. You can configure to hide reviews without text. So like this one should go away when I hide it. And sure enough, it does. You can also filter it by business. So it's kind of weird. I don't know why you would put it both in the source and put both businesses in the source and then hide one. That doesn't really seem to do a whole lot. And then you also have a category, but that's not applicable. Again, I just want to show all the reviews for the business. Our settings tab is super similar as well. So you can basically show and hide any bit of the information you see on the page here. I personally think having the person's image is, it just looks so nice. 
it adds such a nice flair to it. And you don't have to do this yourself. It just pulls in automatically from their profile, which is so cool. You can turn off the review text or their title if they have one. I think that must be a Facebook thing. There is no title to hide on any of these, so that's okay. One thing I'm gonna turn off because this layout doesn't look very good is the equal height. That's actually not on by default. It was me testing it earlier. And then the other thing you have is the content type. So you can show an excerpt and then the read more button actually links to the review. You can have a scroll bar where the content scrolls inside of that review, or you can show the full content, which I think is a little much. I don't really like that. I think I would go with either excerpt or I would go with full content and scroll bar. Once again, we also have our header, not quite as much control as Instagram. We can't change the text in the writer review button, so that must be a Google limitation perhaps. Then of course we can go, you know, hide this, any, any bit of this information that we want. You can of course just turn it all the way off. I think I would probably leave the ratings and the number of reviews. And uh, well, quite honestly, I think I'd leave all of it on. I would just probably use some CSS to change the background of that. Then our pagination, this is the load more. The load more does work on the front end for this one. So I don't know why Instagram's not working. Again, it might be my theme and some custom code I was working with earlier. And then lastly, you also have your schema support. So you can turn on schema for these reviews, which is super cool. So you would add in your logo, name and phone number, and then it's going to essentially stick the review schema on this for you, which is awesome. Same thing again, you have your click to copy short code. You paste that where you want it to show up and you are good to go. Now, the other thing I wanted to touch on just quickly is the chat widget functionality. So you have this chats widget and there's tons of different tools you can use. I'll show you the channel so you have you know, WhatsApp, Messenger, you have WeChat, Snapchat, all these different things. Essentially the way that these work is you're going to put in your username here and then it adds a little thing like this. You click that and it's gonna start a Messenger chat. So what you can do is pick a template. There's a few different ones. So like support, feedback, sale, that kind of thing. You also have your chat header so you can change the person's name. So I could put my own name. I would of course probably want my own photo in there. You have your welcome message. So this just correlates with what's right there. Buttons for us right now is just Messenger, so you can see all of this stuff just works. The chat bubble text allows you to add text next to the icon that kind of kicks off this chat. So if I said something like, need to message us, question mark. And you can, of course, change the bubble icon from whatever service it is, but I don't think I probably would do that. You can change the position, so you can go bottom left, top left, whatever you want. I would probably say bottom right is the most friendly looking. You can set the pages. So I only have a few different pages on this site, but this is super awesome. So maybe you only want this on like your checkout page or your contact page or something like that. You definitely have that option. This is not short code based. You'll have noticed when I clicked over here to the front end, this is my chat widget right there. So this actually pops up everywhere. And that's because of course it says pages to display is everywhere. You also have display by post type, which is pretty cool. So maybe this would be on your product pages if you wanted to give somebody assistance, if they've made it to your product pages in WooCommerce, you could add it there. I don't have WooCommerce on this site, but you get the idea. Another awesome thing is you also have the ability to show and hide it online and offline. So if you know you're gonna be available from you know 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., then you could do something like that. So that is really, really cool. This is of course just gonna redirect somebody to Messenger anyway, but at least it gives them some indication of when you might respond and whether you're gonna be available at that moment or not. You also have the style tab, so you can change all the different colors. That's very self-explanatory. And then the priority for this widget is if you have multiple types of chat widgets, you can start to turn these up and just order them based on the way that they should appear. That way, if you have different types of chat widgets, they're not trying to compete with each other. So overall, I think this plugin is really, really powerful. For me, the most important part of it is gonna come down to the reviews feed and then the social feeds. So I have a few different clients that want Instagram feeds on their site, and we've used uh, one or two other plugins that work fairly reliably, but the thing is they all tend to kind of fall on their face after a little while. So I'm hoping that this holds up. So far the reviews and the functionality of this plugin have all been very positive. I've liked it so far. And like I mentioned earlier, we'll definitely be using it on client sites. So really looking forward to this plugin. So with that, I'm super stoked on this plugin. Real quick before we go, don't forget to click that link in the description below to check out WP Social Ninja. And also if you haven't, click that subscribe button down there. I very much appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a future video.